from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster who's here to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff. It's I'm here to miss <laughs> like uh, barely. I was going to say something, then I got mixed up. Uh, I was trying to think of something that captures the essence of sleep with me, and then I accidentally did it, because uh, this is a podcast that goes off topic, gets mixed up. I forget what I'm talking about. Don't make a whole lot of sense. Sleep with me is a bedtime story podcast for adults that it always it takes forever to never get started, but it's always going. Because I'm here to be your bore bud, your bore friend, like somebody you call in the deep dark night and say, hey, just talk to me and, and keep my mind off of stuff uh, or take my mind off of stuff. Keep me company, ramble, eventually tell me a story. I say, that's what sleep with me is. It does take some getting used to. That's what most uh, regular listeners say. And structurally, what we got coming up, a lot of people like to listen to this ad-supported show linearly, so we'll have the support, then a long, meandering intro, separate from the support that's meant to ease you into bedtime. And then later on, we'll have a bedtime story from our episodically modular series, Multiplex. And all told, I'll be here about an hour. There's 601 episodes in this uh, free ad-supported feed ready to go. You can make playlists, listen to them in order, listen all night. Whatever works for you. See how it goes. I'm so glad you're here. And, uh, yeah, I hope I hope this show can help you out. See how it goes. Uh, welcome to Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And these sponsors are how we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots, and I, I actually need you to listen to this message. If you're a regular listener, listener, sleep with me. If you're new, don't worry about it. But we've got some big decisions with the show on the horizon, so I really, really need your help. If you are a regular listener, sleep with me, and it has changed how you sleep, you rely on the show, you like the show, it, it does something for you, or you feel good about the podcast, you like it, or you count on it, I really got to ask you to take action. So if Sleep With Me means something to you or you like it, if you can afford to support the show directly uh, or you're willing to consider up giving up one uh, takeout lunch a month to support Sleep With Me, try out a trial of Sleep With Me Plus and test out Sleep With Me Plus over the seven day trial and just see, like, see what you think. But I think you'll find you, you'll you'll be blown away because there's just it's just uh, there's so many different ways to listen to Sleep With Me and stuff like that. So if you think you can f afford to support the show please do that sleep at sleep with me plus uh sleep with me podcast.com slash plus and if it does if it doesn't make it if you if you if it doesn't make a difference to you like like it's like i can move on to something else if you stop making the show or you decide to put out way way less episodes or you change what you're doing i, I totally am fine with that that's fine but if sleep with me really does make a difference for you i mean i love making the show uh i don't like being direct because i usually get way more not nice emails when i'm direct about stuff but I like I don't want to put out a message like three months from now and be like, you know what? We're changing things up uh, and we've made some hard decisions. I want you to be a part of uh, this decision making process because it's really like uh, the other time Sleep With Me has been in this place. It's just taken being direct and saying, hey, if you care about the show, I need you to think about doing something about it. So think about it. Um, and yeah, it's, it'll be cool. Like I trust I trust that there's enough of you, enough of you out there that get so much out of the show because I've heard from you before. So yeah, check out sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus or take one of those other actions. And uh, what do you say we get on with the show? All right, buddy. This is Scoots. This is the Sleepy Supporter Zone. I'm trying to do a sped up version of the Sleepy Supporter Zone, but I just need you to pay attention. If you're listening to this ad supported version of the show, our sponsors are direct response, meaning they base their support of the show on uh, how many listeners not just hear these commercials, but actually like listen and say, hey, oh, let me sign up for that free trial. Let me take that free test. Let me check this sponsor out. So uh, that's why I do take the time to thank people. Susie got 
uh, new insurance. You might have already heard me think, Susie, uh, but it's really important. Susie got a new new insurance, uh, was trying to find new health care providers, used our ZocDoc link, used the ZocDoc app, ZocDoc.com slash sleep, found all of Susie's new providers using that app and let me know about it. Let the sponsor know about it. It's huge. It, it is huge. Like tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of people will be listening right tonight, right now because of Susie. Uh, they can't can't afford to support the show directly. So thank you, Susie. If you want to be like Susie, uh, support a sponsor, even a free service like ZocDoc. Let them know about it. Let me know about it. Use that form at sleepmemorypodcast.com slash sponsors. And once again, thank you, Susie. That's the first part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is getting the support you need. There's links to resources in the show notes. You can use those links right now, including international resources. It's also about being a part of positive change, not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying stop AAPI hate, not just saying support Ukraine, not just saying things, but learning more, taking action. There's links where you could do that in the show notes or, and or, I mean, you could go out there in the world and and, and engage the world however you want for positive change, or you could join us uh, right now. We're supporting the Trevor Project, the Midnight Mission, and Hand in Hand. You could join us in supporting those organizations, or you could take action in your own, wherever you want, uh, be a part of positive change. Let me know about it or, you know, share it on social media, uh, how you're engaging positively with the world or your communities uh, that you're a part of. Uh, so thank you, uh, everybody that participates in that. And uh, that's it. Mr. Oh, Mr. Bart, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Sound. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the mystery bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story, yeah. I'll make it personal. You see the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own Facebook group. Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer. These are your moderators. Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon. Buy the merch and support the sponsors. You can find anything you want at sleepwithmepodcast.com. And we're so proud. Thanks, Mystery Bard. Don't forget, the most comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me is Sleep Phones. You could get them with the five bucks off. Go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones. Use Sleep With Me at checkout. And you could get those Sleep With Me branded versions with different sayings from the show. Uh, and now what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome this is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn on the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. It could be thoughts, uh, things on your mind about the past, the present, the future, just uh, thinking thoughts. Uh, it could be feelings, anything uh, emotionally coming up for you. Related to those thoughts or feelings that are just there, it could be physical sensations, changes in time, temperature, routine. You could be going through something, getting over something, anticipate. You know, it could be traveling. You could have guests. You could work at one of those extra. You know, third shift, uh, different shifts. Yeah, you could. Whatever it is, the reason I start to go through some of the stuff is to let you know you're not alone. And I know it's strange with a podcast that's, you know, digital or whatever uh, that, uh, you know, you just download and listen to. Like, you're like, you can't, you don't know me, you can't possibly, believe me, I said, if, if you could count the number of times I've said in my head to someone, you don't know me and you don't get it. So I, I don't presume to totally get what you're going through. But the reason I want you to know is like, like uh, I know how, I may know how it feels. I might not know exactly what you're going through. But there's a chance I could relate to how it feels. In the to a tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. Those are all things I've dealt with. Uh, and, yeah, lately, <laughs> like, uh, 
trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep has been uh, like uh, my dreams have been waking me up, even though I don't know, I'm back in one of those times when uh, my dreams have decided to become hard work uh, and doing some rote tasks and not super restful. And then, I, you know, you know, I don't know, maybe you don't know how it is, but maybe you know how it feels. Even uh, when my daughter's in the next room or I stand with my parents or my dog's in the room with me, it feels lonely and frustrating and a bunch of other things. But the thing is, even if you can't relate to what I'm saying or you're like, you know what, I'm going through something really, uh, this is what I'm dealing with. There is, there's enough people listening that there is someone perking up in bed right now and they have a soft smile on their face. They're lean, they're doing the leaning in, you know, if they're in bed comfortable, leaning in equivalent because they've been through something very similar. So they know how you feel and they are glad you're here and they really hope this podcast can help you out. So that's one thing. The other thing is you deserve a good night's sleep. I, I, I feel that way. And that other person out there listening who's nodding right now, they believe you deserve a good night's sleep, a, pl- a place you could rest, a place you could get the sleep you need and you deserve so your life is more manageable tomorrow. And maybe you could start getting the sleep you need on a regular basis and you could be out there flourishing. That's the hope at least. Uh, and just see how it goes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. So that means I'm going to go off topic. I'm going to get mixed up. Then I'll forget what I was talking about. Then I'll like a double back. Then I'll get mixed up. Then, then I'll repeat myself. Then I'll think of something else that's distracting me. So that's pointless manners and superfluous tangents. Creaky dulcet tones means my voice is not traditionally soothing. It's a friendly voice to some people. And the thing about this show is it's probably different than what you expected. That's what most people say. I mean, when you were, however you discovered the show, maybe someone let you know about it, or maybe you were searching bedtime stories for adults. Maybe you were trying to find something. However you discovered the show, right? Uh, you probably had some idea. Oh, I think this, will, you know, I wonder what this will be like. Uh, and this is different because one, this spot, this is a podcast you just barely listen to. That's one thing that's different about the show. You just kind of bear, it's like an out of focus picture, like a TV on in the other room. You just kind of barely listen to it. It's background noise that you could optionally listen to. And it's also, so it's a podcast you don't really listen to. Also, I'm not here to put you to sleep. I'm here to keep you company while you fall asleep, which is a bit different, right? I'm here to distract you from whatever's keeping you awake to kind of of tell you a story and and, and like in a little while and and go off topic and, and, and just be here present for you. As your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar bud, your boar bestie, your neighbor, your boars, your boar bee, your boar bra, your boar bestie, your BFF, your BBFF. Uh, I'm here to be your friend in the deep, dark night, but there's no pressure to fall asleep. At this show, that's why the shows are over an hour. So you don't have to worry about falling asleep. I'm going to be here. That's why there's 601 shows ready to go for you. And the thing is... um. There's people listening who can't sleep at all. They're either, you know, going through something or they have a kind of insomnia or they're taking a break during the day. So I'll be here to the very end uh, to keep you company, whether you're awake or asleep, whether you're listening to me or not. So those are a couple of things to know. The other thing is like uh, to go back, like when you first get here, you might be skeptical, you might be doubtful, you might be frustrated. And at least the show different than what you expected. It's kind of meandering. It it doesn't really get straight to the point. I'm here to ease you into bedtime, right? And all I can tell you is two things. Like uh, most people, like they say, give it two or three tries. Those are people that like uh, support the podcast, have listened for years and years and years. They didn't like the show when they first got here. Uh, and I guess that's a ringing endorsement uh, in some sense. They said, well, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I've talked about this before, but I, there's an email I get probably once a month that says, uh, four years ago, I listened to your podcast. I loathed it. And, you know, somebody mentioned it or I saw it on a list somewhere. And then uh, two weeks ago, this came up in my life and uh, I uh, someone else mentioned it and I tried it again. 
And at first I was like, I don't know. And then then it, it un, this is a podcast, it doesn't click, it unclicks. So you say, it unclicked. Uh, and I realized, oh, this podcast really is always going nowhere. It's almost, all, you know, it's always never getting started. And now I listen, you know, it's, it's helped me through this time. Or I listen every night or I listen all night long. You've had a positive impact on my life. Now, that isn't the case for everybody, right? So give it two or three tries and see how it goes. Now, if you if you already know you don't like me and you don't want to give it two or three tries, that's okay, too. Or if you give it two, th- two or three tries and you realize, no, it didn't help. Uh, or you've been listening for a few years, you want to try something. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you has other sleep podcasts and sleepy audio on there. So you could check it out because you still deserve a good night's sleep, whether it's, you know, it, hopefully something else can help you get that sleep you need. So that's the other thing. So it's a podcast you don't listen to. It doesn't put you to sleep. It really, you're really hard to like at first. Uh, you're an acquired taste. What else do we need to know? Okay, the other thing that throws people off is the structure of the show. May have already thrown you off already. Like, so I'll explain it to you. And there's ways to customize the show. But our structure is very intentional, and it's just how a lot of people listen. But you can, again, adjust and see what works for you. So most people listen to this ad-supported li- like feed, this podcast, linearly. Like uh, they just start playing it, and then, and then I'll kind of go through the stages as they're listening linearly. And if you're looking for something without ads or something like with just intros or just stories, you probably already heard me talk about ways to do that. But there are ways to do that. And there's ways you could do it. You could pay or you could do it, you know, for free. There's ways you can do that for free. But structurally, the show starts out with a greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And I say something. And that way, if you're new or a regular listener, you feel like, oh, okay, I'm welcome here. I feel seen. I feel welcomed in. Yeah, if you listen a lot, you say, oh, I'm home. Uh, strange, the strange, sleepy podcast home. So that's the greeting. Then there's support, again, because most people enjoy the ad support. They, they enjoy listening to it for free with the ad support. Then after that is a long, meandering intro. Uh, now, the intro is about 15 to 20 minutes long. It's meant to ease you into bedtime, not to put you to sleep. And I've been hearing from more and more people what they do during their wind down time, because that's just what's been shown to work, uh, is, uh, having a transition time. So there's a small percentage of people that fall asleep during the intro and some of them support the show is, you know, says it's a little bit more like more conducive to that. Or there's people that listen all night long, but for most people, the intro is a time they're either in bed, getting comfortable or they're doing some, they're getting ready for bed, or they're doing some sort of other chill activity as they're uh, easing into bedtime. And you could kind of see what works for you, right? Uh, um, but yeah, like to do something chill, uh, to have a buffer from the day. And the intro kind of goes along with that, where I inefficiently try to explain what the podcast is and ease you into bedtime. Or you could skip ahead and start the show at 20 or 30 minutes if you think you could fall asleep, but the intro is just kind of like a, like a leading you in, you know, and, and winding you down. Uh, then again, there's support between the intro and the story. And then tonight will be our story. It's an episodically modular series, meaning you can listen to it in any order. I think this is episode five coming up. So you could always pretend those other episodes are pre- prequels. Uh, and it's about some friends at a mall. Uh, oh boy. I said, uh, like, I think they're going to visit a couple stores and they help people out. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be a nice little story. At least in bedtime, there's always more layers to it. Because, again, some part of your brain may be listening and that helps you unwind. Or if you need a break during the day and you need to listen, like some people wake up and they start listening to the show. I'm here to take your mind off of stuff uh, and keep you company. And yeah, then the show ends with thank yous because uh, it's uh, from the support of people that, that support the show that I'm able to do this and all the other people that work on the show. So I'm glad for that. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. I'm just really glad you're here. I mean, I really honestly really hope this podcast can help you or you find something else that can, particularly right now. I mean, I really know what it's like. Uh, it's like I'm going through a little bit of a time where I'm not looking forward to bed because... Uh, 
I don't know how it's going to go exactly. And uh, like a week or two ago, I was sleeping great. So it can be baffling at times. Uh, but what I return to is the stuff I talk about in the intro. I have I try to have my bedtime routine. Maybe I could be a little bit more consistent about a couple things. And have a way to ease into bedtime and have something to look forward to. So I don't know. I hope the show can be a part of that for you. I'm really glad you're here. I really appreciate you coming by and checking this out. And I really hope we can help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple ways we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive, where customers who save by switching their home and car save nearly $800 on average. Quote at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $793 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2021 and May 2022. Potential savings will vary. Hey, everybody, it's a Scoots here. It's time for our episodically modular series, uh, Multiplex. And uh, it uh, it's a series about four friends uh, in a shopping mall together uh, having an adventure. And uh, they'll fill you in on everything else. Uh, the, the, one, of the, uh, one of the friends is named Wyatt, and Wyatt uh, also has the pleasure of narrating, or pl- pleasure for me to listen to another narrator. Uh, that's Wyatt. And we also, oh, and the, oh, what does episodically modular mean? This may be considered episode five, but really you could listen to these in any order. And uh, that way, like, uh, you could see one through four, it could be prequels. Uh, they're episodically modular. The main character will fill you in on everything you need to know. And, uh, yes, you can just kick back, relax, and get comfortable. If you decide you want to listen to them in order, you could. And that's one of the reasons we keep over, you know, 600, we keep 601 free episodes, ad-supported episodes. Or subscribers have access to tons of different stuff. That way you can get a pick what works for you. But for try it out. Uh, if this is your first time doing something episodically modular, let's just see how it goes, if you wish. But if you wish to not, uh, that's fine too. But you know what I wish? Uh, if I have a wish tonight, wish you may, wish you might, is have Antonio Banderas come and announce the podcaster and find a word that I could have found a word that rhymes with might or tight, like tight would work. Um, but his clothing, who keeps his clothing not too loose and not too tight, uh, for, uh, who, and please tread oh so light. Cause I do ask him to be incredibly comfortable, quiet, uh, stay comfortable, Antonio, just don't move, uh, when I'm recording. But he drive. He he has such a love for all you listeners uh, and your sleep and your comfort. And he's the only person actually that works directly on the podcast that doesn't get compensated. He says it, like he just laughs. Uh, and I say honestly, I'm uncomfortable with this arrange. I mean, I am perfectly comfortable with it, but from uh, like usual, like I say, well, no, no, it only works. Uh, the podcast has to be sustainable, so you know you have to get compensated for your work. Uh, that put, but and he just laughs hysterically, like almost like some part of me he realizes something that I don't realize myself. Uh, and he says it's its own compensation, uh, I'm doing just fine. And I said, Well, the thing is, can, what, we, what we did do, I mean, it's a little behind the scenes, we did enter into a contract because I said, Well, the thing is, if you're not compensated, then I can't create ba- you know, these wonderful boundaries I need you to follow. I mean, it could, but then it's optional, right? You could just show up when you wanted. You know, you could drive to Los Angeles and it could take you, you know, six hours. It could take you 12 hours. And then you would just show up when you show up. And maybe you like, uh, you know, your clothes are too tight or too loose. So they're more noisy. He wasn't aware of it. He says, thank you for teaching me these things. Uh, I had no idea if my clothes were too tight, they would make a sound undetectable to the human ear, except when you're recording a podcast, or the swishing of my clothes being too loose, because he did try to make these adjustments. I said, it's just not working. And he said, what if my birthday... And I said, no, 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 I can't have you walk around in your... Like, uh, angels would be weeping with, like, joy and... uh, 
and other things if you're walking around, you know, in birthday style in my place. Not to mention the fact that uh, I'm not sure that, you know, whatever, then I have to keep the place at a temperature. Yeah, so we entered into a contractual agreement where he is compensated by his joy, the joy. And we, we do do, I, I do do, a, I say, is there a way to um, measure that joy? But it's measured in his smile. And he even says, like, uh, like uh, his gr- gratitude uh, for being able to do this, which I agree with him mostly. I'm also grateful that, you know, he is willing to sit in his car and, you know, not at my, you know, and then wait until I let him come in and then, you know, go through all the procedure or quiet protocols. And then he says, you know, sometimes he will point out some of the silliness. Of he says, you know, I noticed your clothes are, uh, and I say, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, I know it like <laughs> I'm the host, man. I got host mentality. So, uh, like, yeah, he's like, this is a dated, ra- I don't think he's a Doc River. Oh, no, Doc Rivers is a coach. Uh, there was like a, that was a music person. He's, he's like, uh, I don't know. Cause you know, those shows have like, an, there's an one announcer on a show who never sits next to the host on those little talk shows. I don't know, but I'm just honored to be here. I mean, you know, I'm honored, to, I'm, I'm honored to be here. To have him here, our Hollywood announcer, Mr. Antonio Banderas. This is Friends Beyond the Binaries. Ladies and gentlemen, the boys and girls, it's time to go click, click, click to the theater. It's time for Multiplex. Yeah. Wow, spectacular as always. It's Mr. Antonio Banderas, who will be now remain silent. We're going to play some Wandering Towers. Uh, and why, why, wonder why you couldn't <laughs> remain perfectly still for, we're just laughing at each other, hour, 15 minutes, uh, more, more or less. Uh, but that was Mr. Antonio Banderas. This is Multiplex. Good evening, uh, everyone. This is Wyatt here. Uh, and I'm recording these audios. Uh, I don't know how they'll be distributed, but it's to tell a tale that hasn't been told, that I feel hasn't been told before. A tale of the road to average, uh, three high-flying uh, students, uh, friends, and a third, fourth friend uh, who was not, who was different than that, but uh, an essential part of our story. We set off on an adventure that was an adventure, is, is, is traditionally, we can be considered pretty adventurous, but what that adventure led us to was not a... Uh, exciting. It was, uh, I, I, I hesitate to use that word N-O-R-M-A-L because that's not the right word, but to be people among people, uh, to live a, a life, uh, where we say, well, what does that mean to be spectacular? What I mean is when we entered, before we started this journey, all three of us were on separate paths, uh, aspiring to greatness and, uh, aspiring to, uh, an unlimited potential. And what this adventure taught us, which I don't think a lot do, is how to say, huh, what's up with that? Uh, maybe not. Uh, you know, the, because it's just, uh, even though this adventure itself uh, might stick out. And, and what happened for me was uh, that that's changed recently. And I, and I felt the need to explain it because I also uh, took a few steps back uh, I had a public access television show, which a lot of people might not know, years and years ago. And uh, it was small and it was just very niche, as you'd say now, or niche uh, for people that liked a particular kind of movie. And it wasn't uh, really unique. There was people doing it on uh, television channels around the world. And we would interview people, but what what caught the attention now in the digital era is that uh, a lot of my interviews were very, uh, felt more real and authentic. Uh, And this is kind of, uh, I said, well, I need to explain that that's, those weren't interviews or they weren't performances, but that led me to tell this tale uh, about, uh, uh, how, so what, what, what do you need to know coming into this, uh, well, there's three of us uh, that were uh, 
really close friends, uh, uh, San Santos, Josie, Joe's, uh, and myself, Wyatt. And then there was Boyd, the corncob kid. Not a friend of ours, but we were friendly with Boyd. Boyd was a char- Boyd's character uh, and was a character around school. And recently we were uh, heading towards graduation from high school and my path forward had changed uh, because of different things with my family and uh, expecting to get this uh, scholarship uh, that would bring me on to my next phase and for the first time being unable to p- perform really uh, like uh, with the interview and a part of the process. I didn't get that scholarship, and I was at a loss of how I was going to go on to the next part of my journey. And uh, we were playing mini golf, uh, just the three of us, uh, to kind of relieve some of the tension and process it and imagine if this mini golf game came with a scholarship. But it did not, but it came with an interruption right at the end uh, from Boyd, the corncob kid who had gone through a culvert uh, by this mini golf course to a, a shopping mall that had been closed for some time, but not so long that it would totally fall. It had just been slowly forgotten. Uh, moved, people had moved on to a larger shopping mall of all things. Uh, but this thing was not small. And Boyd said, uh, Basically, trying to give you the short version, Boyd said, hey, there's uh, Julius J. Juice Concentrate, uh, which at the malls uh, used to be popular. Where you, I, I don't know. I never had one. Uh, orange juice. In, it was an orange juice-based enjoyment drink. I guess it wasn't from fresh squeezed orange juice. It was from Concentrate. Uh, and Boyd said, you know, Julius J. Juice went out of business and Mall went out of business, but this mall, the former Julius J. Juice mall store is full of Julius J. Juice concentrates. And Boyd had a way to sell it uh, on the bulletin boards of what you would now call the Internet and the groups, uh, use groups or whatever. And Boyd said, I just need some help getting it out of the mall. And we went back and forth, right? Is this a good idea? Will we get in trouble? Is this where, where, but uh, Boyd, it was pretty profitable since the cost of goods was zero. And there was a lot of it. uh, And so we went along with it. At some point, uh, San and Josie changed their minds because the mall was blocked by a bunch of fences that seemed newer than the mall itself. And then we got in the mall, and we were planning on getting in the juice. But along the way, we met somebody at, like, uh, the world of uh, cutlery who needed a hand finding uh, a store item. And and then we found ourselves uh, in what we believed uh, was uh, what you would call now immersive theater in a, in a room of uh, uh, getting out of but on a large, much larger scale, like a mystery, immersive mystery theater within a mall. And we met what we thought was a character or animatronic from this adventure uh, who was kind of wrapped in uh, swaddling, like it was a way to look, but an adult made from uh, uh, decorative, uh, like anatomical, uh, de- 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 decorative, uh, like things. and, and uh, wrappings from the, the phase of the past movies, a fictional phase of uh, Egypt and Eg- adventures in Egypt, but only the, no- the non-historical uh, version. Famous films uh, like Mommies and stuff like that. Uh, and so we were helping this animatronic mommy uh, gather some things and get back into the multiplex uh, and in back into their film, her film. It ended up she had been a, a sorceress uh, in the film. Maybe you're familiar with it, maybe not. And then it, this is when things, there's something unreal about this whole thing. I mean, from the, the start, our now looking back, telling the tale, it's obvious, but it, to us it was... Still a slight question mark, because uh, somehow we got the mommy back into an actual film. And the last thing I remember is that uh, as we helped her, 
uh, on her quest. Uh, the, then the film became more of like a advertisement for breakfast cereal. And then I think we took a nap or something because we had kind of lost track of time. And because in the mall, it's an artificial environment, particularly we were in a movie theater at this point and we sat down or maybe something else. But, but uh, we came out of it. Uh, we had all been sleeping. And I think we, at this point, we have better gauge of time uh, because then the short version as we started having some, as we all woke up, uh, we started having some pretty uh, strong disagreements, right? Uh, uh, what time it did we, we, is it really in the morning now? Should we check in at home? We got to get out of here. Let's get something to eat. There's still f- like uh, old, cause there's still stuff in the snack bar. I mean, not everything, but uh, even if, uh, what is it like, uh, we were kind of shouting to the people we thought were running this thing. Was this really an interactive theater performance? Uh, now, the only way we could explain it is like, this is some kind of long weekend. Now, the thing was, there was a, a popular movie at the time about that day, uh, first day of April. It was called The First Day of April. Uh, no Fooling on the First Day of April, it was called. I believe the movie's been remade sometimes. And we had seen that, you know, when we had sleepovers, we watched that movie. And so that's another part of it is that movie made us think like, like, cause you say Boyd or, 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 or Wyatt or Josie or Sam, how do you not know? Well, that whole movie is based on a similar presence. So we'll bring people to this place and we'll have an adventure for the whole weekend. So that's why the door was still open. And, and of course, the Julius J. Juice. Now, we had sent a large portion of the Julius J. Juice with the mommy because she had said she needed things of great value. But there's still more in the store. And I was kind of on the fence at this point. And San and Josie definitely wanted to go home. Boyd, the corn cob kid, uh, was pretty quiet uh, and, and trying to hear everybody's sides. And we weren't getting a response to whoever may have been running this interactive attraction experience. And again, this was this was like uh, uh, was quite a bit of time ago, right? Uh, in the eighties, uh, so it was uh, was the nineties. I don't even know anymore, but uh, doesn't matter. So uh, we went back and forth, deciding we should just leave. Uh, we should just get out of the mall. Uh, we should, you know, the, like, uh, and we said, well, let's get the juice first. No, let's just go. And said, we tried the back doors to the theater, which had been adjusted over the years because, uh, the, the doors, you say, Hey, if you need to get out of the theater, use these doors. But what would have happened, you know, is people would let their friends in through those doors to, to movies back when the mall was open. So they had like added these hallways on to make it so so that didn't work. Those doors weren't were not operable anymore since the mall had closed. And then uh, again, like just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I said, okay, well we'll just go back to where we started. But okay, but then we got to pass Julius J. Juice. We might as well get some juice. We could still probably exit through Julius J. Juice unless I'm forgetting something. But I don't know. We, we, it, was, it was just, it was confusing. We're already confused. And uh, then all of a sudden we heard like an alert thing go off. Uh, like uh, it, it, once we, were, we had left the, the multiplex back into the mall. And this was an alert like uh, that made us again think it was, it was uh, it, like uh, had a nice calming robotic voice. And uh, it said, uh, you know, like uh, the, that the mall was closing for the evening, even though it was not the evening, and that we had a short amount of time. All all employees, are, you know, this is the new. I don't know, but so that, but unfortunately, what, what that meant was that, uh, like a lot of the, we didn't even realize this because we'd never been in the mall after it was closed. Was that uh, so? The stores had their own gates, which were there were some of which were open, and they were going down. 
but there was also other gates uh, that were going down. And as we started to move, uh, we realized, well, one, we can't get to back to, uh, to the world of cutlery in that way. And so we were kind of like, we had left the section where the multiplex is and we'd moved into another section, but then we couldn't, we were in, we were, uh, we, we were, uh, the mall was going to shut down for the night. And so, I don't know, I guess it's so people who couldn't just hang out in there and have fun. And maybe so they didn't really have to pay anybody to walk around and keep an eye on stuff. I don't know. But, uh, so ended up, we were stuck. Uh, believe it or not, there's movies about this too, like about how important it was to keep the mall secure after the evening. So we couldn't get back to Julius J. Juice, couldn't get back to the world of cutlery. Now we were really irritated with one another, shaking the gates. Uh, we're now in a section of the mall we hadn't been in before, uh, or, or we had just passed through, you know, uh, between whatever the layout doesn't is super important, but, uh, and you know, like, uh, we, all of our, the star, the pits in our stomachs were not feeling good and whatever, we're going back and forth. Uh, and then we tried a couple of stores and we said, okay, well, we'll try once we calm down, it became, uh, uh, like just, okay, we'll keep trying gates, uh, and then as we were trying gates, you know, then we were wondering if we were hearing things because the gates are making noise. And finally, before we even got to the gate, we could see uh, that the, uh, like, uh, like uh, the gate to Spence's, uh, Spence's gifts, to Spen Spence's gifts, uh, like Spence's, like uh, giving you gifts. It's an interesting story. Everybody that worked there was known as Spence. Uh, Everybody that worked there had a name tag that said they were Spence. Uh, it was kind of like, in some sense, th this store also not was no longer operating. And uh, this store was marketed to us. We'll, we'll, we'll cover them more. Uh, but everybody that worked there was known as Spence. Uh, and they would even say, hey, Spence, yo, Spence, uh, do you know where, you do, do we have, uh, we have any of those ashtrays in stock, Spence? Oh, yeah, over there, Spence. So that why, that's why I was known as Spence's Gifts. Uh, like you were going to Spence's to buy gifts that Spence had, uh, you weren't gifted anything. I think there was a Spence's Gifts gift club, but uh, so the gate was open to Spence's uh, halfway. We said, okay, there we go. It must have broke or something. And we had a laugh. Uh, now, Spence's was a place we spent a lot of time, especially... It was it was a lure and marketing towards uh, like uh, people that liked uh, I don't know it's different stuff uh, for people like we hadn't reached this stage yet believe it or not where uh, it was four twenty four twenty somewhere but if you liked uh, posters cars glow-in-the-dark things, interesting, goofy things. They used to have, uh, this is funny to me now, like uh, you could buy over-the-hill toilet paper for somebody when their birthday reached, I mean, maybe 50. I don't even know, which is hilarious to me at this point. Uh, just things like uh, unique gifts, uh, that uh, were like a little bit of a novelty. I think that's what they would call it. Novelties, gifts, and more. But we would go there for the posters and the goofy stuff. Uh, and of course, there was posters that uh, were uh, more, uh, that would make us uh, blush and sweat. Uh, but there was also, uh, well, well, we'll get there. Because when you go into the store, there was a back, there's two back sections, right? A back, back section that was for posters and other items that uh, you were supposed to be like an adult to go into that section. That was behind one set of velvet curtains. Then there was another set of velvet curtains before that. And there was a person usually there to say, whoa, whoa, kids, uh, and we would try to sneak by them or stuff in high school. I'll admit it, you know, I would admit it. We were curious, uh. And I'll tell you what, our curiosity was more interesting than what we found because it was all pretty uh, not that interesting. I mean, I guess, well, eh, but anyway, 
The section before that, there used to be these posters that were incredibly popular, and they would be combined with glow-in-the-dark and black lights and other items uh, like lava lamps and things. So this section was the black light section. So it was the second to the last section of the store, and it had posters for metal bands and other things, uh, psychedelic-type stuff, all in black light. Uh, and then there was the rest of the store, the front half of the store and the checkout and everything like that. So uh, why is that important? Well, because we went into the store, and uh, so when you looked in the store, so there's no, you know, there's less light in the mall because uh, it's not open, and the store lights were out. Uh, and so we went into the front half of the store under the, under the gate, right? Uh, and our plan was to go to the back of the store and go out the do door. And I, I'm thinking that uh, Spence's door, can't remember now, but I think our thought was that Spence's door probably opened right to the outside and not to an interior hallway. And that we just go out the door um, because it was on the same side of the mall as uh, Julius J. Juice, not in the same section, but facing the same direction. It has been some time, and I'm just recollecting. So, but then <laughs> there's just this natural inclination that uh, we, 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 as soon as we went through the first set of, of, of uh, black velvet curtains, you could see nothing. And uh, even kind of holding the curtains open, which we tried to do while one person made it to the other side, like, uh, it wasn't possible, right? Uh, I don't I don't know. Like, uh, and it was also kind of cool because... Uh, uh, we kind of forget when you're in darkness with friends, dark, they're, they're, they're like, uh, I don't know. This just sticks out to me because this is what happened, but whatever. We tried everything we could do. And again, like we had to, we, what our original plan was to like to hold one person, hold the black, first set of black velvet curtains open. Somebody gets to the second set, op holds those open then somebody goes to the third set and finds the back storeroom in the store and holds those open. And then somebody goes all the way through. But then the first person, I think we tried to do that, right? But then it was like the back of the store, there was no light. Then the first person, like, like, oh, the first curtain, then it was total. Then all of us were clo cloaked in total darkness, right? Then we kind of did it like a Marco Polo thing, and we were trying to find our way to each other. And Boyd had held the first curtain open, and Boyd kind of has a boy. You know, when you say a name like Boyd, the Corn Cob Kit, they've got a voice that has some resonance. Uh, and Boyd uh, was not an authority figure, but because Boyd was Boyd was just a very unique person, they had a, a sense of self that maybe the rest of us didn't have uh, wandering around in the darkness. So Boyd was calling us over. We're bumping into stuff. We're going into stuff. Uh, thinking about this in reverse, we should have gone to the back of the store. But again, it was pitch dark. Uh, and we're like, Boyd, could, but whatever. So we're trying to find one another. And at first it was kind of not the greatest experience, right? You you don't know where you are. You're bumping into stuff. We're already heightened in our senses. Uh, then, we're taught, we'll, we, then we start finding each other. First, that's a surprise. And then, of course, uh, we had one more surprise, which was we found each other. Then we were trying to, then somebody said, what was that? Like, like uh, and of course, we see a pair of glow in the dark uh, uh, comedy. Like, oh, this is another thing they sold there. V what is it? Like the stuff, not magic tricks, but the other stuff like smelly powder. And this was one. It was the googly eyes uh, detective kit, I think they would call it. Uh, and I think Pee Wee Herman even had a pair of these. And maybe it even was in a Pee Wee Herman movie. But we saw those, right? And we said, my word, that's uh, like, uh, 
and uh, we're kind of we're all in the darkness, frozen. And then uh, we heard uh, like like uh, as we were kind of like uh, all four of us unable to process ourselves. We heard like uh, something. I don't know if this is what they said, but this person said, "Welcome to Spences, my dudes." I don't know if they used my dudes at Spences, but it was something like that, you know, whatever the parlance was of the time. And again, we were, uh, we could have been like petrified wood. And uh, the person said, uh, what can I help you with? You shouldn't be, by the way, you shouldn't be crawling crawling around. And like they went off script right away. Shouldn't be crawling around here. And then they lit a lighter. And again, none of us, this was not calming for any of us until we saw them in the, even with the lighter and they were the most spence of spences, uh, uh, even as, a, uh, even in the light of a lighter, I guess it, like they had long hair and, uh, by the way, it was, you know, dispenses it like, uh, it could be used for, for any gender identity, but this was like a, a, a like a, like a metalhead dude, right? He was saying my dudes, uh, so he had long hair. He was in his twenties, uh, seemed like he was in his forties to us, but I would probably, he was probably in his twenties. He had on his uh, Spence vest with his name, Sp- um, so well, my name's Spence. And, uh, but he, 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 he said, uh, come on to the front of the store, follow me like, uh, with his lighter, which eventually went out and then he had to turn back on. And he said, well, that's, well, that was warm. When we got to the front of the store when it was lit and he was even, he was as Spence's as advertised, uh, like we were already, we, we, we and he was calm and cool and dominant for us, uh, so we suddenly felt like, uh, okay. And it, or another line of thinking in my brain, at least was, if this is an actor. He's this God-like actor as a part of this performance we found ourselves in. And he had this calm, warm look on his face of concern and caring. And I knew we were going to be okay, uh, uh, but it was mostly like, uh, like, and, and I mean, this is strange, but, but gallons of metal testosterone, like the great JJ, you may have heard about, uh, the legendary drummer JJ. Now he had a, this, this Spence had a shirt on, but he said, put your hands up, uh, which we were like, what? But we all did. And he said, okay, good, good, good. I was afraid you might've got some of the, um, uh, broken bulbs on your hands. Uh, and he said, look, brush off your pants and stuff. Cause we were, we had been crawling around a bit too. And some of us had little bits of broken fluorescent bulb, uh, on our jeans and pants, uh, and the bottoms of our shoes. Uh, and then he kind of did a bit, Oh boy, well, man. Uh, and then for a little while it was a back and forth, uh, that I'm not sure about because right away, uh, uh, it started with saying, he said, well, you, hey, we want, we don't, we want this performance. We, we just want to leave. We got to check in with our folks. We're not, we didn't, we just found ourselves in the mall. We're sorry that we got involved in your performance and this theater, but we're ready to leave, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, like, uh, you know, was, then Josie started in and I guess I felt the need to kind of like also see you, like to be the polite one. And, uh, the Spence just stood there looking at us, uh, like, okay, okay. And then Spence, uh, held up his, his hands, uh, and said, uh, I have no idea what you're talking about, dudes, uh. And again, this is just my reinterpretation of it many, many years later. Uh, and we we're like, no, 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 no. Like, uh, we don't like, what is there like an exit word? We don't want to be a part of this mystery anymore. Please, you, you, you can break character or whatever. 
And Sven said, I'm not a character, man. I'm at work and I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad because I need your help. Uh, and we went back and forth with this, right? Uh, and again, you, you do have to understand that there was something, maybe it was gravitas or some sort of more uh, evolution-based thing, uh, that this was this male figure who was not any of our fathers, who was distilled maleness, uh, that we only felt we could push things so far, but also that he wasn't pushing back or anything, that uh, he had such a presence that he said, uh, no, this is uh, like, uh, like, so it was intractable in some sense. And he said, I need your help. Uh, and and uh, then we even said, hold on. And I was like, and then Boyd said, let's just... Uh, Let's just see how this goes. Uh, and, and then uh, Sans said, well, we need your help too. And then Spence clapped his hands and said, perfect, my dudes. Like, uh, we'll work this out together. And they said, uh, like, uh, like uh, Spence said, like, okay, well, like, wh what do you need help with, uh, buddy? I think at this point it became a little buddy uh, to, to at least uh, Sand to kind of say, well, just try to relax. He said, so we got to get out of here. And Spence said, oh, okay. Like, uh, I think there was a phrase back then, and maybe it wasn't on the get down or the down low or something, but it was like, oh, okay, man. Like, I get it. I get it. Uh, you need to get out the back, huh? And Sam said, yeah, yeah, no, no. We need to get out of the back right now, though. And he said, okay, okay. I got the keys to the back. Uh, and again, if it was a different situation, like, there was no sense of where we're going to emotionally overpower or sway Spence, uh, even though we wanted to, right? Uh, we just, in a sense, of, well, we just want to leave now, though. Can you just give us the keys now? You have the keys. And then Spence kind of just said, you seen, man, can't even barely get through there. Couldn't see the door if we needed it. And he said, you have a lighter. Spence said, man, I just need your help. Uh, just take a few minutes. And we st like uh, eventually we were worn down uh, to be listened and reasonable uh, uh, by Spence's calmness and, and openness and dominance. And so we said, okay. And Spence said, yeah, okay, man. Like uh, all you need to do is go down to the t Tiki Transistor Hut, which sold a lot more than Tiki Transistor. It was a Tiki themed hut for radios at one point it was a store though it was tiki you know tiki style but it sold all sorts of different stuff at this point uh and in some sense it was a complimentary shop uh, to, to uh it was more for electronics but he said uh, you know somebody came in here and busted up all the black lights and I can't be working and let, you know, the poster room's pitch dark, man. And and then the, uh, you know, the after dark room is, uh, you know, too dark too. So I need you to go down to Tiki Transistor Hut uh, and see see if they, uh, they, 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 they do have black lights uh, and they have two black lights and other kind of black lights. So I need you to go down there and get, get some and bring them back. Uh, and we were like, well, like, uh. And he said, just keep a count and we'll invoice them. Don't worry. Like, uh, we're owned by the same parent company, uh, so it's fine. Uh, and I even have the key to the gate, so uh, you can go in there. And we're not taking anything. We're going to, you know, you keep track uh, and I'll write up an invoice and we'll, we'll make sure they get paid. Nothing, you know, there's nothing strange about it. But you, Spence, Spence needs the posters to be on display. And again, it was a little bit tiring going back and forth again, but Spence was just so reasonable and made us feel unreasonable. Uh, he said, go ahead, man, here's the key. Like, uh, off my keychain, got the key to the back door. Once you get those lights, you, you can hit the road. And uh, so then we had, eventually we gave in and we went under the gate at the front of Spence's and we headed out. Uh, and again, it was in the same section of the mall, uh, across the way and down. So a little bit of ways, a couple of, you know, planters and, and uh, things in the way. Uh, so a little bit of a walk. We had to the Tiki Transistor Hut. Uh, and of course, uh, 
um, as, as with the last tale, uh, before we got there, we heard something. And uh, that's when, again, we said, okay, this is this theater. Doesn't make sense except w with the model we have of the No Fooling on the April 1st movie that we're in this, you know, without an option. So, okay, so we go down there. And uh, the person, the voice was like uh, somewhat uh, not intimidating. It was someone saying, I need some customer service here. I need some customer service, uh, which was weird because the gate was down. But again, we said, okay, well, this is a task. We've all played, I mean, my friends and I we played role-playing games. We played video games. Maybe this was the last quest to get out of there. So... We opened the gate to uh, uh, the Transistor Tiki Hut, and this didn't have any back room or anything. It was an open shop, and we saw around the corner. Uh, now, we w weren't totally surprised, but we were. But this was not an animatronic, but a person dressed up in a very elaborate uh, uh, costume, uh, that was made to be an amalgamation of, uh, people, uh, put together, uh, and, uh, you know, that we've seen in films, uh, with, you know, like, uh, the original was made by Victor and, but there's been, you know, there's been Mel Brooks has done it and of, uh, Frankie's right. Uh, but this was a female Frankie asking for customer service at the transistor tiki hut. But, in, and again, you might say, what we, but it was like we were immersed in something we were trying to get out of at this point. So we did, our disbelief was in a different place. It was a very impressive costume. And as soon as we opened the gate, it said, about time. Like, do you, which one of you works here? All of you? And this is when I thought everybody was kind of on the same page because uh, Boyd said, oh, we'll be right with you. We just got to get everything set up. Uh, and then uh, Boyd, Boyd, who I thought was in it to win, like was, was uh, I'd kind of given into the thing of like, okay, let's just complete this quest. Spence will let us out and then there'll be, we'll be able to leave or. Maybe it'll be, I, I, I don't know. I was just following the, the track laid out for us. And I thought everybody was, but then Boyd said, one second, I'll be right with you. And Boyd said, okay, like, uh, we can always check the door here too and see if we could just get out here uh, now that we're in the store and we could see if this key works. Uh, so you distract them. And I'll go, give me the key. I'll go get the, I'll see if this works on the door. Because uh, this was a, a more traditional store. So it had a back area where only the employees would go behind the counter to get stock or to come and go and check in for work. And so then we went up to this, 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 this uh, person, uh, Franny's her name, uh, which we found out. And we said, uh, uh, Actually, it was, it was Josie said, welcome to Transistor Tiki Hut. How can I help you? Because we forgot that Josie worked, used to work at Transistor Tiki Hut. Uh, any Tiki-licious transistors or, or we, we can turn you on to? And you have to do this. Again, these are these themed stores. Uh, you do like this uh, hang 10 sign. Very cringy, I guess, at this point. Uh, and if you were in high school, people would go and watch you do it and make fun of you. For some reason, being at Spence's was cool, but working at Transistor Tiki Hut was more for people to stand outside and laugh when you had to participate. But pretending your name was Spence was something to be idolized. But again, Spence didn't hire, Spence's and wouldn't hire high school students. Maybe that's it. So this person said, well, I'm Franny, like, uh, and I need to, to get this stuff up and working. And we noticed that Franny had some broken glass, uh, so not that it was a mystery. Uh, like uh, kind of uh, like imprinted on the, their, like they had been crawling around in broken black lights. Uh, and 
of course, Santos said, like, haven't you, like, uh, w w like, what do you, didn't you already, like, uh, try to do this? Like, because, uh, oh, so Franny was around the section that had other black lights and other novelty lights, plasma lights, lava lamps, glitter lamps. And Franny knew what they were. And we said, well, what can we help you with? And then it was a long, this was a long story. Uh, I don't think, think I can just give you the highlights because it fits uh, the larger picture. This was Franny, right? Like Frankie, Franny explained to us that she was the, the amalgamation of ultimate companions of the world. Not that kind of companion. She looked at me and said, you know, famous people, blah, blah, blah. And I've been like, uh, like taught to be, you know, the, the ultimate, but uh, no one wants me as their ultimate companion. Like, you know, I'm versed in conversation, games, blah, blah, blah. Like, uh, and we didn't really know how to bridge the subject because he said, well, you know, you look, you, you maybe, maybe, but you're a physical amalgam amalgamation of, uh, companions or figures and she, she even said like you know this this you know check out my forearm it's uh i can't even remember like uh whatever some famous talk or something let's just say this is samuel clemens uh this is and we said yeah but uh samuel clemens has gone on to the big farm and left that forearm you know to be, become a part of, you know, return to the circle of life. Uh, and so that is already in the process of returning to the circle of life, and it's kind of off-putting, and I prefer not to be in the vicinity of it. That's really cool. I don't know, what do they do, do that with latex or what? Uh, so we did try to say stuff like that, uh, and Franny was using terms like wretched and, and whatever. Uh, and we said, okay, well, what, what like, what, like, uh, then, oh, Boyd came back at some point and said, the key doesn't work. Uh, but if I, like, uh, if I can get some help, whispered this to us, obviously, like I can find something and, uh, Sam, you come with me and we'll try to, we'll, we'll get the door open. We'll work the door open. Uh, but you keep working here, you know, buy us time or work it out. So again, we went through this, it was just Josie and I and Franny. And we said, okay, well, what do you need help with? Like, uh, pretend it wasn't pretend for Josie. So, okay, well, what do you need? Uh, well, I need, cause, oh, because there was also on the boxes, there's pictures, of all this stuff. Uh, and Franny said, this is exactly the stuff I need. Uh, I tried to get it in the other room and, uh, I need to get this stuff. I need to get it back to where uh, the maiden of iron is. Uh, and that took us a while to figure out. We said, oh, it's the posters. There's a famous uh, character on the posters of the maiden of iron. And she was a powerful figure. Also, uh, more similar to an anatomical being for, you know, like decorative purposes. Uh so we said, okay, wait a second. So, and this is mostly Josie using Tiki Transistor Tiki Hut training to say, okay, so you need these, you know, Franny's pointing at the plasma balls and the plasma tubes and the black lights and the electric lava lamp, like this circle that looks like lightning. Okay, so you need this stuff. And you needed it to transition to Tiki Hut. Okay, okay, okay. But for, for what again? Well, I need to become the Maiden of Iron. And we said, well, why? And I said, well, that may, then, then people will like me. And again, this was something we could relate to. Mistakenly, we were relating, saying, oh, yeah, that's like one of the reasons we go to Spence's is like to be, because part of us wants to be like one of the Spence's particularly the suspense we had just been in the presence of. We could barely overcome, we couldn't overpower that suspense even with argument. Like, who doesn't want to be a suspense? So we said, okay, so you just need us to bring you back there. And then, and then yeah, I'm going to refine, I'm going to become the maiden of iron. This is what Franny was saying. And then I'm going to return. And we said to the, to the multiplex, uh, and she said, what? Uh, no, no, France. Uh, uh, and we said, 
Okay, but uh, like through the multi, like in a room, you're going to get back to France through a room with chairs and carpet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I came in. Then I was lost. Then I saw the maiden of iron. I knew, like, it came back here to renew my purpose. Uh, I got to go back. Uh, I'm, I, I need people to realize that I'm the ultimate. And obviously, there's this whole shrine to the maiden of iron. She must be adored. And I need to be adored. That's my purpose as the ultimate companion constructed and amalgam amalgamated. Now, there was a little bit of thing here that we had read this book. Uh, and we had all even written joke poetry, either in journals as Victor or about Victor or Vi what, was it, what would it be like to be Victor's friend. And none of it was very nice to Victor. Uh, and even Franny State made us say, what's up with this Victor dude? Uh, but, the, but So that was always in our minds because that was a year earlier we had read that book in school. Uh, like, but it was Frank, Frankie and Victor, my story by Victor. Like that was a book, right? So we had written Frankie's story. So we were kind of like... Uh, Oh boy, like, uh, yeah, you've got, you didn't ask for this, huh? Like, so we'll help you. Okay, then Boyd and Sand came back and said, we got the door, let's go. And this was when we were already kind of get like, Josie was already in work mode, right? So Josie was already helping gather everything we would need, like kind of going through everything and getting like as many black lights uh, as they would, as we would need. And even like film, like keeping track, to be honest. And I was kind of like, okay, well, we could just complete this quest, though. And they're like, no, 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 we can leave now. We got a door open to the back hallway. Let's go. And I was a little bit torn. And uh, like uh, Josie was not. Josie said, okay, okay, okay. Like, let me just put everything together and finish writing this up. And then they'll figure it out. Uh, you'll figure it out, right, Franny? Franny said, well, I need to get all this work. I'll need you. And we said, okay, well, don't worry. We'll help you. Like, uh, as Josie said that. And uh, I was still unsure. And then um, uh, Boyd said, don't worry. We, he goes, if you really want to stop at Julie's J Juice, like we'll, we could come back or we could get the juice or we'll figure out something else. But let's just go now and get out of here and uh, forget Franny forget Spence, I mean, which I kind of felt bad about, right? Because we'd always been taught, um, I mean, to strive to be our best. And this was a situation where we were supposed to, even though it was like, okay, if we're playing a game, we're supposed to play the game to win and complete the quest, even if we don't like it anymore. If we're saying we're going to help Spence, we've made an obligation. We should help Spence. Now we're saying we're helping Franny. We made an oblig. You, you stick to your obligations. You're obliged to be, ob you're ob obligated to be obliged or something. And uh, I was taught through nature and nurture these lessons, you know, na nature by my sister, uh, nurture by my parents. Uh, so, but and I know, but then I could see that San and Josie, like through their family, you know, and Boyd in another way. But it was like, sometimes you got to let those things go, right? And get out, like it's time to go, it's time to go. And I got caught up in that, and I said, okay, let's go. Uh, and then Franny said, well, where are you going? I said, oh, we're going to – I lied uh, directly to Franny. I said, we'll be right back. We're just going to go on back and check stuff. Uh, and even Josie said, okay, everything's right there that you need, and then we're going to bring it to Spence's, like, or you could bring it to Spence's, uh, get a head start. Uh, and then we went out through the employee into the stock room and the break room and out into the, the service hallway leaving Franny and he heading out. Uh, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't be telling you this if it was the end of the story, but it might be the end for, because we went down. And, of course, we had forgotten about that alert that had gone and that, yeah, we got to a set of doors, and those doors were uh, not, you know, in the in the hallway in both directions. The, the doors that kind of like compartmentalize the building uh, were closed and not uh, going to be opened by even four teens. Like I think they involve, you know, magnets and, and stuff like that. Uh, and so we, we uh, first we all just sat there kind of defeated uh, 
And that's good time. We took a little break uh, because it was. I was embarrassed. I said, "Like, what are we gonna do now?" Uh, uh, even though a few minutes had passed, it was like we'd already done something wrong. But and now looking back at us, we were just kids doing the best we could. Uh, so yeah, we'll see what happens next. We'll be back uh, pretty soon. Here, uh, this is your friend Wyatt uh, saying good night. All right, this is uh, Drew. I just want to thank everybody that uh, signed up uh, or moved over to Sleep With Me Plus recently. Uh, Rachel, John, and Karen. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Eve, Paul, and James. Thank you. Thanks, 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 and good night. Desiree, Christian, and Indigo. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Lynn, Marty, and Michael. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Judy, Daniel, and Jared, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Andy, Jason, and Betsy, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Mark, Astrid, and Morgan, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. PJ, Rosemary, and Kate, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Tyler, Ian, and Craig, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. And William and Christina, thanks, thanks, and good night. Thanks, everybody. I couldn't do it without all of you. I uh, really appreciate uh, the support. Um, and uh, people that support the show directly, support the show through the referral program, or support the sponsors this is really how we're able to be here for you for free a couple times a week. Uh, and I really appreciate it because I couldn't do it without all of you. And, uh, yeah, a free way to support the show is uh, try out a free trial from a sponsor or join the referral program. Get rewarded for something you already do. And here's Scoots uh, either kind of giving you a week in, weeks in review or um, a tuck you in sponsor. Thanks and good night. All right, buddy, Scoots here. I'm doing our month in review uh, on Sleep With Me Plus, uh, which is similar if you're still listening on Patreon, if you could think about moving over, but it's going to be similar to, to what uh, you you would have seen there this month. And as far as the ad-free episodes, a lot of them are, are coming out in the um, ad-supported feed that you, you all listen to as well. Um, I got to find my, the right podcast app. Uh, so I was also buying time because, uh, okay. So like, uh, so on sleep with me plus one of the main differences, everything is separated out into uh, its own feeds. Uh, so there's four different podcasts. I'm going to start with the bonus episode podcast. So it just has bonus shows. Uh, and on March 2nd, um, a mayor tour, Welcome to Scooterville, a posty special edition super deluxe episode came out. These are really cool. They come out on uh, a couple Saturdays a month. And these are uh, something that's just really important, been really important to me. Um, ideally, down the road, we'll have budget to do more or somebody else even do a version two. But it's basically Chris Posty Posterson from Sounds Like an Ear, Ear, Earful. Uh, it takes an episode of Sleep With Me and reimagines it uh, in a sense. Uh, it, with That's pretty much it. Like, uh, that's all the instructions for Chris. Hey, take an episode, reimagine it. But this year, Chris has been doing this for years. So in the bonus feed, it's years and years and years of this. As a matter of fact, in the bonus feed, I'm looking at there's 377 episodes. I think that's in the uh, Boar Besties feed. But uh, so right now in 2020... Four? Is that what year it is? Chris is doing um, this uh, Scooterville series. So definitely worth checking out if you're like, love sleeping me. You're looking for something like a little bit different with some sound design. You want to listen to it during the day. Or a lot of people, <laughs> when they start to support the show and they discover these, this is what they sleep to because everybody's a little bit different. Uh, what else we got in this feed? Uh, audio news, uh, Scooterville. Oh, contact. Uh, um, TNG Contact Part 2 came out since I think we last recorded this. And then a Fearless Flyer episode is about to come out. I think it may be this week, um, the February Fearless Flyer episode. Okay, then Boar Besties and Boar Friends can also get a feed with all intro and all night shows. So Thursday night, an all intro episode came out. A oh, weird, the all, the, uh, the all night episode, um, I might have archived it, uh, but Big Farm in the Sky PI, huh, I guess uh, the, there's an all night episode that's going to come out or should be in this feed that is, so, so doesn't seem to be there. So this is good. I'm checking this. This is live quality control. Maybe it's in another feed. I put it in the wrong feed. But yeah, um, 
Not sure which one it is either. So I'll have to look into that. So that's interesting. Okay, then lo- then you get a, a, a feed with uh, ad-free full episodes. And uh, so they don't have any, um, they have, uh, they don't have the uh, supporter zone. They don't have the sponsor stuff. They don't have um, the uh, mystery bard music or the thank yous at the end. But they are something that, because uh, um, you can listen to that in the ad supported version, right? But um, so let's see, episode 12, 20, 1245 came out Sunday. That was Great British Bake Off episode eight. Multiplex episode three came out, Hickory Dickory Farms. Uh, Ren Fair with Ray came out March 3rd, 1243, 1242, Bake Off, Episode 7 came out. February 25th, uh, Multiplex, Episode 2 came out, Julius J. Juice. Um, what else we got? Uh, uh, 1240, Apple Cider Redo, that was Trader Joe's a Shop and Cook episode. Big retraction in that one. You know, I it made, retracted my opinion on Apple Cider Donuts from Trader Joe's. So, yeah, and then the audio news. And then in story only, we had uh, uh, C12, the same thing. Uh, everything comes out on Sleep With Me Plus. If you're, this is so cool. There's something we only have been able to do since we moved to a new platform is we're able to put out the story only episodes and the, all, the, 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 the full episodes on the same day because they're in separate podcasts. We couldn't do that on the old platform because everything would just been too clogged up and it would just been too confusing for a large number of people. So now, yeah, story only, there's like a lot of story only fans and yeah, they got the same thing. Uh, Great British Bake Off 8, Multiplex 3, Run Fair with Ray, Great British 7, Multiplex 2, Trader Joe's Shop and Cook, Apple Cider, uh, then, uh, dessert week, uh, great British bake off, whatever, whatever episode six multiplex one, uh, wandering towers, board game unboxing. So yeah, that's everything that came out this week. Uh, I don't have my calendar in front of me. We've been working, I've been re- working really hard at the planning calendar and we got some exciting stuff coming up to sleep to. That's so exciting. You don't need to listen to it. Uh, what do we have? Multiplex seven I recorded yesterday. Started writing multiplex eight today. Uh, these are, these are a couple months away, but the guild, the web series of the guild, uh, we did the a part of season one of that. And we're definitely going to do season one of that that and probably season two maybe go on i don't know maybe maybe do season one and season two and take a break those will be coming out uh, late spring early summer um i came up with two new ideas uh for uh random tuesday episodes one with pillow like uh, other plush friends of pillow pad and then another one that um would be called the uh the marble vagabond and those were episode ideas that came out of intros. Uh, neither of those has been recorded, though. Those intros were recorded. The Marble Vagabond intro will be in b- part two of our coverage of the movie Bring It On. Uh, what else have we recorded? Uh, we did a, oh, I guess in the last month, uh, we did an episode called Wil- Wildy Wonk uh, uh, Interactive Experience, Immersive Adventure, which I was really happy with. And that's going to be a new genre of Sleep With Me style show of like... Uh, Poorly run immersive event, immersive experiences like the one like that kind of what got a lot of press uh, and we got to do we got to work on the audio for something very similar but it was called the Wildy Wanga uh, experience uh, also not very not a very high budget experience but at least it had audio from Scoots or a narrator like Scoots so that'll come out late spring early summer. And then our our crossover series, uh, we got th- 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 three episodes done, episode two, three, and four from season one. Uh, so that'll be coming out this spring, too, in summer. So, yeah, that's everything right now. And thanks so much. Uh, if you're listening to this, a free, free feed, it'd be great. Uh, if you think about supporting the show, it's sleepingwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Uh, this enables us to do everything we do. And those of you that support the sponsors, we also really count on those of you that just spread the word about the show. So thank you for doing that. And, uh, that's it. Uh, good night, everybody.